Hello and welcome to On the Record with me, Shireen Bhan. Joining me today is a man who is spearheading India's largest uh, airline, Indigo. Uh, Peter, many, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your time. For the benefit of our viewers, uh, it has been a beat on all fronts as far as your last quarter numbers were concerned. Revenue up 61%, margins at 22.8% versus 21.5%. Profit after tax at 1,422 crore rupees versus 129.7 crores. All-time high yields coming in for Q3. Peter, the question though is, uh, given where demand stands at this point in time is this kind of performance sustainable well th thank you thank you indeed the uh, the third quarter have been a, a wonderful and good quarter for us which was actually to be fair long awaited for um, after all the difficult quarters we had throughout COVID and even the first uh, quarters recovering from COVID, uh, we have set in motion a wide range of actions and initiatives and these have coincided with a very strong market situation actually uh, and that combination of a strong market situation initiatives on our side has led to these, uh, these very strong uh, Q3 results. A little bit on the outlook, we see that, that, that still the market is it's a strong market uh, and the demand is still strong going forward. Okay, so you're saying strong market, strong demand. Uh, uh, will you be able to hold yields uh, and deliver uh, and replicate the kind of success that you saw as far as Q3 is concerned? And more importantly, your guidance of being operationally profitable for FY23, excluding Forex losses, do you hold that guidance? Well, there's always some seasonality, of course, in every quarter. And, and obviously, Q3 is a very strong quarter. But with the, with the solid demand we're, we're seeking made us to, uh, to be confident looking to the future. I'm not giving any precise numbers in terms of outlook or in terms of precise uh, margins going forward. Uh, but again, the range of initiatives we're taking, the solid market demand, the upbeat uh, economic situation in India, all these factors uh, make us very confident in, in looking forward uh, and uh, basically providing a capacity uh, guidance which we set initially for the entire full year 23 in the range of 13 to 17 percent we will be ending up at the very high end of that more like 17 to 18 percent basically underlining uh, that solid demand and confidence we have in the market okay so that's interesting you're saying that you will be able to get to the higher end of that uh, band that you had guided for as far as capacity addition is concerned perhaps even better it because the band was 13 to 17 percent you're saying you could perhaps even do 18 percent peter well we're aiming for being on the high end and of course there's still we're not at the end of the quarter yet uh, but the demand is solid the situation in the market is is good uh, we've taken various uh, initiatives to deal with the supply chain challenges and with that uh, we expect to end up at that high range of that margin at uh, 13 to 17 percent so let's understand the initiatives that you have taken one to address the supply side issues b to take on competitive pressure which is starting to build now i'll get to the air india order in just a second but both on addressing the supply side issues uh, what can we expect beyond the measures already taken well, we have uh, indeed the supply chain uh, challenges, which is a global challenge uh, uh, indeed. Uh, we have taken various measures to, to address that. One was to extend some of the existing leases uh, and, and keep some of the fleet in the operation, which we were initially uh, supposed to return. Uh, we have introduced a wet lease operation in order to, to deal with that. Again, all temporary measures uh, to deal with the global supply chain challenges against the backdrop of a very solid and strong uh, demand here. When it comes to dealing with, with competitive challenges, we have taken the initiatives, in fact, to reinforce uh, the, the, the strong points which have made Indigo uh, into a, a, a wonderful company, what it has been doing for the past 16 years. So we have reinforced our customer promise, on-time performance being one of them. And I'm very, very proud, actually, on the teams that were back uh, in, uh, in November and December when it comes to the number one on-time performance. In addition to those customer promises, on-time performance, hassle-free and courteous service and affordable fares, we have further stepped uh, up our efforts with further internationalization of our network. We've expanded uh, our international operations hand-in-hand -hand with some of the domestic uh, expansions and some of the collaborations we have with, with other carriers in terms of co-share. So that combination of having supply uh, of capacity on the one hand side and a range of initiatives when it comes to our customer promise, promise 
our international positioning. The combination of these factors have really helped us. And, and at the end of the day, numbers speak. And I'm very glad with the, the introduction you gave at the start of this interview with our uh, third quarter earnings and revenue numbers, which indeed uh, were the highest in the history of the company uh, and basically also on the profitability side. After all these difficult quarters with COVID, uh, clearly Indigo is back and back in, back in business. Uh, back in business. Let's focus on the international plans because you spoke about how that is going to be a key growth driver as far as the airline is concerned. International operations are expected to grow faster. That is what you've guided for. You've also said that you expect the international operations to contribute nearly 23% uh, of, uh, uh, of your asks as uh, uh, and you've guided for about 30% in FY24. Now, you know, I, what should we expect in terms of additions as far as destinations are concerned, inking more code share, code share agreements with airlines, etc.? How do you really see your international plans building on where you are today? Well, Indigo started 16 years ago as a domestic as a domestic carrier. Uh, we've had a wonderful journey over these years, and today we do operate uh, a total of 76 domestic destinations, supplemented by 26 international. So, if you look to today's composition in terms of destination mix, it's about uh, 25, 20, 25 percent um, is on the international side, and there's there's uh, 75 percent on the domestic side. When it comes to our total production number. It's, it's even slightly less. It's more in the range of 20-ish percent we do international. With the growth of India, with the economic development of India, with the position India is taking more and more on the global stage and with foreign investments coming in and in Indian manufacturers making products here and exporting them, uh, we, we do see clearly an international growth which is, which is stepping up. Um, and in addition to that, the share of Indian carriers in the international uh, traffic, uh, we believe still has a lot of room to, to improve and to increase that share. Looking at the position of Indigo for that, these 26 destinations will grow going forward. We've added a couple of destinations in the year 22. We're eyeing now for the year 23 to open up destinations such as Nairobi, uh, Jakarta, and we're reviewing some Central, uh, Central Asia locations. Again, there, the geographical position of India is really helpful for us to develop that network. So hand in hand with the growth of India, the economic growth, the international trade numbers, uh, we're expanding our network with a combination of new destinations uh, and uh, actually uh, increased flight numbers to these international places. And with that, that number will move up from today's 20 ish percent uh, more in the direction of 30 percent. More in the direction of 30 percent. But just for 2023, you gave me a list of the destinations that you are looking at adding on. How many do you expect to add on in 2023 itself in terms of international destinations? And how many, what is going to be the flight frequency as well? Well, in, in terms of, again, today, 76 domestic and 26 international, I do expect that for the year 20, the calendar year 23 or fiscal year 24, we, we would expect to have some anywhere between 10 and 50 new destinations to be opened in a mixture of domestic and international. The ones we have announced already domestic are the Ramsala and Nasik, uh, and international, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, uh, we, we do I, Nairobi and Jakarta as, as ones. We're looking at Central Asia, and depending on the speed of further opening of China, we'll further open up China as well. So I, I do expect that these 10 to 15 new destinations would be roughly split 50-50 between domestic and, and international. Um, for us, it's very important to continue to build on the strength of what, what has made Indigo to what it is with an unparalleled domestic network with all these destinations. And, and not only destinations, really. It's also a set of 400 different routes we fly direct in the country. And that, that in itself, I think it's, it's a great asset for all the Indian travelers who can now fly direct from one point to the other uh, within the country itself. Well, you know, you talked about your domestic strength and your domestic advantage, and uh, and that is the reason why you enjoy the kind of market share that you do at almost 55%. But let's now talk about the competitive landscape. You've got a re 
Surgent, Air India. Uh, you, of course, got Vistara as well. And, of course, the two are likely to be merged by the target, of course, is uh, March of next year. Uh, you've then got Akasa, and we don't know whether Jet will eventually fly in 2023 or not, but there is a possibility of that. How are you addressing the competitive landscape? And what do you make of the two orders placed by Air India uh, and what it would mean as far as your own fleet addition is concerned? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's a, a couple of questions you combine in one. Uh, let me try to address all of them. Um, speaking about the, uh, the order itself, I think it speaks to the, to the confidence and the, uh, the belief in the growth of, of India as, a, as an upcoming aviation giant. Today, India, I would say, is, is underserved when it comes to aviation itself and the growth we're facing actually today and the expectations going forward uh, basically are a are a proof of the belief in in the further growth of that indian of the of the indian market the order which is being placed is, is obviously long awaited for and and a lot of been uh, a lot of been speculated about and if you were to take the top 10 airline orders in the world today uh, two out of these 10 and probably two out of five uh, are, are in fact by Indian carriers. One of them is Indigo. We do have uh, a little short of 500 aircraft on order based on, on existing orders. And now there's the Air India one. So that basically speaks to the, uh, to the potential and the size of the market uh, in India. Um, and, and as such, uh, Indigo, uh, we draft our own course, we draft our own, uh, our own plan. So um, the order itself, uh, it is there. I think for Indigo, we, we placed our order uh, for growth already in 2019. We do have actually a steady flow of deliveries already uh, now and in the years to come. And, and obviously for us, we continue to build on that, on that, that uh, order book we're having. The overall market itself and the size of the market and where the market will be in a few years from now, obviously will have enough room for multiple carriers operating in that market. And if you look from that, from an international perspective, markets of the size of India, whether you look at the US or China or the European landscape, they all have multiple airlines or multiple airline groups in different segments of the market. And, and it's my take that also India will, will move in that direction. Uh, you know, I just want to pick up on the order book. Uh, yes, you have placed an order of 500 aircraft, but you also did uh, uh, acknowledge the supply chain constraints that not just you, but uh, the global aviation industry is faced with. So what can we realistically expect in terms of annual deliveries? What are you hoping for in terms of deliveries in 2023 to start with? You also spoke about uh, some of the temporary measures like the wet leases, etc. Uh, again, on that front, what can we expect in terms of fleet addition for the calendar year? Well, we, we, we are uh, still assuming a steady influx of, of aircraft. And if you look just to the, the number of, of, of aircraft we're having uh, and the actual size of it, um, we're, we're in discussions, of course, with suppliers, what's going to be the precise moment of deliveries and so on. Yet we still do expect uh, a 40 plus uh, set of deliveries uh, for the year 23 to come and we've given some capacity guidance uh, uh, last week which is in the high mid-teens uh, when it comes to our, our growth projections uh, for the year 24. Um, when it comes to dealing with the supply chain I think we're in a good position as, uh, as Indigo that we do have a couple of leases uh, where we do have flexibility for lease extensions in order to deal with the, with the supply chain issues uh, as, as it's our objective. Uh, to accommodate uh, the strong demand we see in the market. Of the strong demand and that of course has been the, one of the big reasons why we've seen the aviation industry rebound and specifically indigo rebound in the manner that it has uh, in terms of pricing uh, and while so far uh, you know in terms of uh, pricing we haven't seen any irrational uh, exhibition of, uh, of pricing on display that's the sense that we get is the expectation that that's likely to continue what's your belief given the competition at this point in time well, I, I guess uh, competition pricing is up to competition to react on that. Uh, when I look to the, to the third quarter, uh, we had actually a pricing situation where for us we, we, could, we could benefit uh, from the increased demand and make sure that we had some pricing stability. 
there's always going to be fluctuation in terms of high season and low season and, and, and peak and, and, and slower, slower times. That's always there. Um, but I think it's important for the market in India and as such, uh, the, uh, the consolidation taking place under the umbrella of Air India speaks, I guess, to the further consolidation and, and the maturing, if I may use that word, of the Indian aviation market, where uh, you get a more stable situation, which eventually is good for, for everyone, uh, and especially co the consumers in having a bit more predictability in uh, what's directions and what's pricing. Well, that's an interesting take, a maturing of the Indian aviation market. But Peter, uh, you know, speaking of uh, maturing, you've been talking about the 16-year legacy uh, that Indigo uh, has and is building on. Let me also talk to you then uh, on what you intend to do with the cash that you have on hand. Uh, you know, over 10,000 crores at this point in time. What do you intend to do with it? Well, when I speak about the maturing of the Indian market, I just, I just like to sort of point out a, a couple of numbers. Um, and if you see what is the, if you take it as a, a percentage of flyers on the population, if you see it as a, the GDP and you translate GDP into, into aviation growth, if you even see the number of aircraft in operation in the nation itself, uh, compared to the size of the country, the size of the economy, the, the potential and actually the, the forward looking, I think all these all these indicators are directing into, into a track where there's, there's basically a, a, a growth at hand for the years to come uh, to build on that. I think Indigo uh, and the, um, the, the founders of Indigo always had a visionary look and a forward-looking uh, 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 position uh, to order uh, well in time for that growth. And we're benefiting, in fact, today from that. The order which was placed earlier is providing us today uh, with a steady stream of deliveries already now, and yes, we have challenges on the supply chain, chain but in the grand scheme of things, we're benefiting from a steady flow of aircraft coming in, in in 22 and in 23 and in 24. And yes, despite the supply chain, there's still a steady flow of aircraft coming in, which helps us really um, to, to accommodate uh, the demand and to make sure that we continue to deliver all these travel opportunities to our customers. Uh, when it comes to, to the cash position, your, your question, uh, I think it, it helped us a lot to have a strong cash position throughout the difficult COVID time. Um, it helps us to have a solid foundation and from that we do, we do look forward and I'm not going to give any speculations uh, how to precisely uh, allocate it or how to precisely do it. Again, we're, we're investing in our company and in the growth of, uh, of Indigo going forward. Uh, you know, you, I understand that you may not be able to share specific numbers, but since you said that you are looking to use that cash to invest in growth, uh, you know, what could that potentially be? What sides of the business uh, do you believe that you will need to invest more in that would be a good use of the cash? Well, again, the very core of Indigo is to continue on what we have, what, what has been the success of Indigo for the past 16 years and uh, to grow from a, a zero basis to 300 aircraft in operation, uh, which we, the milestone we achieved in January. I think there's no, no uh, airline in the country yet which has achieved that 300 aircraft milestone. Uh, and that, of course, requires a lot of dedication, a lot of professionalism. So we continue to in invest in that part. And again, I, I wouldn't like to go into all the cash details, if you don't mind. Sure, I understand. Uh, uh, you know, you spoke about the promoters and you spoke about uh, the promoters having the foresight to have placed large orders. And that has been part of Indigo's history. Uh, I, I don't know if you can answer this or not, but this is certainly something that the market uh, does see as an overhang on what Mr. Gangwal intends to do with his... Uh, remaining stake in the company and whether there is any uh, clarity on offloading uh, that stake? Well, that, I would say that's totally up to him and the, uh, the understanding which, which, uh, which, which there is. And, and I, I would not be able to, to comment on that. Uh, that's really up to, uh, to the shareholder himself what to do with that. Uh, fair enough, Peter. So let me end then by asking you, uh, you know, given uh, where demand is, given the outlook for growth at this point in time, what about hiring plans? Uh, you know, it was a difficult period for the aviation industry through COVID. Uh, now that we have seen demand stabilize and go back to uh, pre-COVID levels, what's the outlook as far as hiring is concerned? Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's a very valid point. And if you take a bit more a global uh, approach there, uh, a, lot of, a lot of carriers have been, have been challenged. 
uh, with the return of travelers and with the sort of return post-COVID at Indigo, and I would say that speaks to the agility of the company. Uh, we have been able to to step up our our flights and, and our production really after all the, the bad COVID uh, time. We have hired a lot of new people in, in uh, the year 20, fiscal year uh, 22. Uh, we continue to do so, um, preparing for the growth, as I said, in the high mid-teens, we're planning to that. And of course, that would lead to growth in different parts of the company, uh, on the operational side, but also on, on the support side. And, and there, I would say the, the aviation sector itself is still a sector which is attractive for a lot of people, a lot of people passionate about the product and, and, and excited to work in the, in the space of aviation. And I think at Indigo, again, there, the history speaks to that. We have been able to, to attract good people uh, and to be able to train them and make sure that, that we're, we're ready and able to cope with that growth. Uh, my final question to you, our margins at 22.8%, uh, Peter. Uh, and, you know, you have no control as far as ATF prices are concerned. You can only hope that they will continue to be where they currently are and not trend higher. What else can we expect on the cost side uh, for you to be able to provide the cushion uh, uh, and bump as far as margins are concerned? Anything more on the digitization front? Any other cost levers that you are focused on? Yeah, um, well, you, you're right on the ATF side. There's, there's only so much you can do uh, as an airline uh, on that. I think some of the recent um, um, ATF tax uh, adjustments in some states have been very helpful uh, when it comes to development of aviation. I think some of the, the overall policies when it comes to supporting aviation, uh, the opening of new airports. So we have seen uh, quite a few of these policies being very uh, effective to stimulate aviation. And as we all know, aviation and economic uh, developments really go hand in hand. And uh, at some places where we open new flights, we see that the economic uh, uh, effects and the economic uh, aftermath of that are really very, very positive. When it comes to cost, that's an a very important element at Indigo. Um, part of the customer promise is affordable fares. Our cost leadership is really uh, entangled to that. Uh, so we are taking, uh, as always, a very close eye on, on our cost and the cost levels. We continue to do so. Our fleet plans with all the fleet renewal, uh, of course, are helping us uh, to operate um, the most efficient fleet. We were recently named as the uh, most uh, uh, efficient and youngest fleet, actually, uh, of all the airlines uh, with more than 100 aircraft in operation. Well, that's clearly something which do well for the cost and at the same time for the environment as well. So that also speaks, I would say, to our, our commitments on sustainability. So that mixture of various costs, lower, lower uh, mile, seat mile cost when it comes with operating of new fleet and all the initiatives we're taking in the company should, should help us to maintain that cost leadership going forward. Well, Peter, it's always a pleasure. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 on the record. Thanks very much for your time and we wish you and Indico the very best of luck. My pleasure. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks very much. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of On the Record. From all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.